Right guys, so with all the screws taken out, you take off the front muzzle, pull off the battery cover, off the butt, and pop the whole thing apart. Done. Brilliant. It can come out. You get access to fill all them with the, the nice cute putty. And uh, we're rearing to go. So all I've got to do yeah, is my nemesis get the actuator working. Somebody suggested I put a um, electric um, pusher from like a rapid strike or something in. But unfortunately I don't have one. Um, and I really wouldn't want to rip a rapid strike apart just to provide a pusher for this. Um, what I'm actually thinking of doing is maybe... 3D printing one should be relatively simple. There might be one on Thingiverse already, um, and we'll see what happens. All right, guys, so, um, back again. Final assembly. So I've got everything done. Got my nice new buttstock printed. Slightly fatter piston. Um, this uh, magazine catch made out of internal parts. While it works and it works okay, I've decided I'm going to print myself a, a nice shape one. Got the insert in, perfect size, fits really well. Done a little bit of filling, that's all that'll be sanded. I was thinking about what else to do, and it struck me that what I want to do is this squared off front, I really like it, so I want to enhance it and sort of make it appear stronger. So one idea is to print a piece that fits this and get sort of get rid of that hole, maybe have that perforated or a couple of slots in it so you can see the detail underneath. But the more I looked at it, the more I realised it looked like one of my earlier pieces. Um, um, same thing, bullpup design, I'll put a pistol grip at the front. Looking at this, I've got two Picatinny rails there. I was wondering if I could make something that just slides on a handle. And after a few goes and a lot of messing around, I got this. I printed this, took about uh, seven and a half hours. This is E-Sun Bone White Filament. Uh, I made the walls intentionally thick and there's no fill in it, so it's really strong, really strong, but because of that I needed to do a lot of sanding here to get it to actually slide on, and it actually, the white Picatinny rail slides in there, and this whole grey thing slips in there, and it's a really good fit, put it on, and I designed it with this recess that it can come around and cover up this, so... I just have to stand it up and put up a lot of pressure to get it on. Done. So there it is. Now what I'll do, I'll probably sand off a little bit of this. Just neaten it up so there's no sharp bit there. And I take that off. Got to get rid of the nerf there. Got to cover up that. And I'm pretty much ready for paint. Um, probably keep the same scope, just paint it up. Maybe print a little bit to go on it or something. And longer shroud, I don't know. But I'm pretty, guys, pretty just tough. a quick uh, update, it's about 40 degrees outside, so it's about 45 in the shed, so I'm not going to be here long. Okay, um, had to do a few things, get a few things sorted. So, first, I wanted to make myself a um, magazine catch. So, I did the usual thing, made a few profiles, got one that actually worked. And it clicks in there like that. So, just printed the actual solid thing. So, it's just a matter of getting the spring I used on the um, previous one, wacky it in there, and I've got myself a magazine catch that seems to work. I can always modify it at a later date. So, magazine catch, done. Excellent. And the other thing I managed to sort was the... Um, getting the uh, muzzle flush with the front of this. So, and despite all my grinding and cutting back here and testing for contact points with green paint, it actually turned out to be the front of this. So I just sliced off the front of that because it was hitting that, and it's done. Looks good. So, the next step is I'm going to put in a, um, a motorized pusher, and I downloaded um, a pusher unit from Thingiverse. I can't remember whose name it was. I'll put it down at the bottom of the video here and I don't even think it's for this this blaster but it sort of fits in there so I've got a good good idea of what I need to do so I'll probably make 
and my own custom one to fit in there. Right, back again, guys. Um, and just for posterity, another classic Andy Work stuff up. Um, I thought it'd be clever and buy this stuff from my local electronic store. Got a motor and a worm gear. Modified this box and got this all sorted. Got this. Got the cog to sit on, everything um, worked out. And as soon as you plug power in, the worm gear either drives itself off and jams or it shifts out of alignment. Um, and this thing just doesn't spin. So, I've got the original box. I'll get put myself out the other gear that goes with that. It seems I need to buy myself or find some, um, I suppose they're called electric motor mounting screws that go all the way through. So that can get stuck there, like so. Which means I'll have to cut a small hole in the side of the body and 3D model the housing to go over it, which won't be a great issue. A uh, bit annoying. I suppose I could perhaps tilt this somehow, so make that housing smaller. But this thing sitting in here by itself, on the cog, on that, is too low. It's hitting the far side. So I think the simple thing we'll do would be to put a blob of epoxy putty either side and just push it in while it's still soft and unset and get it in the right spot. And then it's just a case of putting a screw through in it to hold it in place. So I'm going to do all that. Cut a nice neat hole in that side for the motor to stand, stick out. Yeah, I know. It jammed. Ha! Very first time it jammed. Mm. All right, let's try again. All I have to do is operate the flywheels and jam this in while holding the magazine in place, which is going to be so much fun. Here we go. And it's jammed yet again. As soon as I do, do, do the test on camera, let's see, nothing's in there. Works fine. Yep, that's where it's supposed to go, so let's try again. Maybe I need to move the whole thing back a tad. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Alright, back in a second. <sighs> Bit more light. Okay. Move the whole pusher back box back about two, three millimeters at most. By itself, it seems to be fine. Let's see what happens when we try to shoot darts through it, eh? Jeez, what is going on? I'm thinking it's somehow pressure upwards as opposed to how much power that thing's got pushing forwards. Having all sorts of problems with it and so I reached out to the community and asked a few questions via Facebook and got a few answers which were very helpful. Um, and I think the general consensus is what I thought anyway. I've got, I just bought a, a motor from my local um, electronic store thought great buy you know five bucks 4.5 volt motor and it's really fast but it's got no torque it's got no pushing power so um a few people have suggested things i think somebody said v2s or something like that i can't remember I'll, i can go and check that's not a problem so i'll get the proper motor but surprise surprise out of nowhere a young lad contacted me um 
can't quite remember his name at the moment. I'll, I'll put the name down below here if I remember. Um, and he said, I'm building a pusher with a 30 to 1 ratio. And he said, would I like a better test? And I said, yes, please. So he sent me all the files, which I've printed out. So that's all the internals. And here's all the case. And I thought I was a reasonably good designer, but this guy is pretty fantastic. Got a stringing issue, but that doesn't worry me. Um, probably just the settings. So uh, I'll put that together and play with that for a while. And that'll be in the next movie. For now, um, things that I've done is not much apart from gouge a gigantic hole in the side of my blaster. But since I've got five of these, I could just take the side of another one or just patch that. And I think because I'm Australian and we're pretty tight about things, I'll just patch that. Um, what else? Oh, yes. Uh, I was looking at uh, this um, the foregrip. And the fact that there's no detail there, and I was going to print another piece to stick on with screw heads and glue heads, you know, in detail. But I thought, no, what I'll do is just countersink a couple of holes in there, put a two couple of actual screws in, looks like it's screwed on. And at the back here, where this is on the gun body, um, let's see, see, if I can, see if I can show you, it sort of sits like that. So you can sort of see down there, you can see those holes and those the structures. So what I've made is just this little bit. This is just a temporary, just to get the shape right. So I'll just fit it there. And when I put the blaster back together, slide this on. Of course, these sides will be glued in and these support structures will be cut out. Um, and then see how it fits and if I need to make any um, adjustments. What I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this on with hot wax. So the wax will just hold it in place while I muck around with it and do things. And then I'll just be able to peel it straight off. So that won't be an issue. Yeah, so that's where I'm pretty much at with this thing. Uh, it's been going on far too long, I know, but it will get to me soon enough. And that's about it for now, guys. So I think I'm going to get this monstrosity out here. That, And I'm not saying who designed this as a monstrosity. You, it's a good idea. It just doesn't work for me. And I'm saying it's a monstrosity because of what I've done to it. Um, okay, and I will probably post another movie in a couple of weeks. I'm pretty... Um, tight for time at the moment lots of things going on and we'll see you when we see you happy nerfing bye now